As MuleSoft becomes more and more integrated into applications' day-to-day -day functionality, the availability of those applications becomes more and more important. Hi, I'm Kyle Burke with MuleSoft's Customer Success Strategy and Architecture team. And in today's Friends of Max video, I plan to discuss how MuleSoft provides application and platform high availability out of the box, as well as different options that you have for multi-region disaster recovery. With that being said, let's jump into the presentation and discuss these topics in more detail. In today's presentation, we will discuss Cloud Hub architecture and definitions, single region application high availability, and as well as multi-region application high availability and disaster recovery, and then follow up with some next steps that you can take in order to learn more information about this topic. Before we get started talking about the specific capabilities MuleSoft provides for high availability and disaster recovery, it's important that we level set on some terminology to ensure we're speaking the same language. Firstly, we have high availability and disaster recovery. Often these two terms are used interchangeably, but they are absolutely have different definitions. High availability refers to a system's ability to remain accessible in the event of component failure. In other words, if one piece of the system goes down, does the entire system have the capability to remain accessible, or will the entire system be inaccessible? Conversely, disaster recovery refers to if an entire system goes down, can that system be recovered? Generally, this failure is due to some kind of natural or man-made disaster, like a flood or a fire of some sort, that will completely destroy a data center or something of the like. The last two definitions are very much related, but refer to different measures of tolerance that a business has for failure and how quickly they can recover. Recovery time objective, often referred to as RTO, is a measure of how long it takes for a system to recover should a failure happen. Similarly, recovery point objective, or RPO, is the measure of how accurate the recovery will be. Later on, we will talk about the different recovery objectives for MuleSoft and CloudHub. Next, it is important to level set on what specifically we are referring to CloudHub high availability and disaster recovery. MuleSoft's Cloud Hub architecture actually refers to three different components, the Runtime Management Council, the Platform Services, and the Worker Cloud. The first two components of Cloud Hub, the Platform Services and the Subsequent Management Council, are two components that we often refer to as the Management Plane, where you can go to manage your applications that are running. Though we will talk briefly about what MuleSoft provides as far as high availability and RTO and RPO for these components, the majority of what we'll discuss is in reference to the worker cloud, often referred to as the runtime plane, where your applications actually reside. On this slide, we will discuss the availability of MuleSoft's management plane, which we discussed on the previous slide. Firstly, it is important to note that MuleSoft's Cloud Hub architecture runs entirely on Amazon's AWS, and therefore, our availability is very closely tied with that of AWS. As you may know, AWS handles its availability by splitting its deployments into multiple regions and then splitting those regions into smaller availability zones, which are geographically disparate. MuleSoft ensures high availability of its management plane by deploying all of its services across multiple availability zones, which ensure that even if an entire availability zone goes down, which is very rare, there will not be a service disruption. Because of this, we have an RTO of 72 hours to restore an entire availability zone should it go down. Along those same lines, we ensure that if we ever need to fully restore an availability zone, the backup we'd be restoring from is no more than 24 hours old. Keep in mind, unless we have every availability zone go down in an AWS region, MuleSoft Management Plane is still available for usage. Though there may be some performance degradation of the applications, this does not affect the actual application performance itself. Now that we have level set on how MuleSoft provides high availability for the management plane, let's discuss how we provide application high availability out of the box with our Cloud Hub architecture on AWS. To understand how high availability is handled for MuleSoft applications deploying Cloud Hub, it is important to understand the deployment architecture of those applications. 
Starting from the outside and working in, as we discussed, all of the Cloud Hub applications are deployed onto Amazon's AWS architecture. On this architecture, customers can choose to deploy their own virtual private cloud, often referred to as a VPC, to any of AWS regions, and then those deployments will subsequently be spread across all the availability zones in that AWS region. It is important to note that customers are not required to deploy their applications into VPCs, but if they choose not to, the applications will be deployed into the MuleSoft's shared worker cloud, which is a multi-tenant solution provided by MuleSoft. For the purposes of this presentation, we will be assuming that customers are deploying their applications into their own VPC. Once you have your VPC deployed to an AWS region, now comes the first step in determining the level of availability of your application by choosing the number of workers when you deploy the application. When you deploy an application to Cloud Hub, you choose the worker size, i.e. how much memory and CPU power is available for the application, as well as the number of workers you wish to deploy your application on. When an application is deployed to only one worker, as shown on this slide, there is no level of high availability provided other than the ability to auto-heal when your worker crashes. To further clarify, all the auto-healing means is that the same application will be automatically redeployed in the event of a worker failure. With that being said, there is some downside associated with this option as you need to wait for the new worker to be spun up and the application to be deployed. Conversely, if you decide to deploy your application on more than one worker, there will be multiple copies of your application that will automatically deploy it across multiple availability zones. When this happens, your application will automatically have a level of high availability because there are multiple copies of the same application running in the result of a failure. Also, this deployment methodology allows for zero downtime deployments in the case where an application update or upgrades are required. To further clarify, within MuleSoft's Cloud Hub architecture, there is a concept of zero downtime deployments, which ensures that even when application restarts or upgrades are occurring, there will always be a working application running when more than one worker is deployed for said application. The basic procedure for zero downtime deployments is that some kind of update is requested and Cloud Hub begins to spin up a new application without shutting down the old application. While this new application is spinning up, all the traffic continues to be routed to the old application. Once the new application is fully spun up, traffic will automatically be redirected to the newly deployed application and then the old application will be shut down. If there is some error with the deployment of the new application, traffic will continue to flow to the old application. Therefore, there is never any disruption in application availability, even when there is some kind of error in the newly deployed application. For most customers, deploying an application in one region with multiple workers is completely adequate, but some customers want an additional level of availability or recoverability. For these customers, it is possible to deploy your applications across multiple regions. With that being said, multi-region deployments are significantly more complex and requires additional investment in infrastructure, process, and MuleSoft vCores. In order to fully understand the implications of multi-region deployments of an application, it is important to understand that different licensing models are associated with multi-region deployments. The first model is the cold standby option, which would require you to have a secondary region built out and ready for deployments, but applications are not actually running in that region. This deployment model is advantageous because it limits the number of vCores that are needed, but also requires the longest amount of downtime because the applications need to be manually deployed in the case of an application failure. A second model that can be used is the hot standby model with an active passive configuration, where all of your applications are fully deployed in the secondary region and have the capability to receive traffic at any time, but based on contractual stipulations will only receive traffic in a disaster recovery scenario. This model is advantageous because it allows for very little downtime essentially the time that it takes to identify a failure and change the traffic routing rules. But this model does not allow for doing smoke testing of the applications in the secondary environment because traffic is not allowed to those applications. The third scenario, hot standby with an active active configuration, is the most flexible model, but also requires the largest cost from a licensing perspective, as all the applications are deployed and can receive traffic at any time. 
Another advantage of this approach is it allows for applications to be smoke tested in a canary or blue-green deployment model to ensure both regions are fully functional at all times. In the case where customers wish to deploy their applications across multiple regions, a typical deployment might look something like this. Here, as you can see, a customer has two separate VPCs deployed in different regions, which will enable applications to be deployed in multiple AWS regions and subsequently cross multiple availability zones if multiple workers are deployed. In order to balance the traffic between multiple regions, a global load balancer is required. In this diagram, we show AWS's Route 53 global load balancer, but you can utilize any kind of global load balancer, such as an F5 global load balancer, or whatever you may have within your organization. Choosing to deploy applications across multiple regions in Cloud Hub should not be a decision taken lightly. There's a lot of additional considerations that should be taken into account when making this decision that are not covered in this presentation. I plan to make follow-up videos associated with the additional considerations, but here's a quick highlight of some of them. A big factor to consider when making this decision is the use of state and how persistent storage is used in your applications. Additionally, it's important to understand how this would translate to a multi-region strategy where you can't guarantee where the applications are running. You should also understand the impact of your CI-CD pipeline and how applications would be deployed via this pipeline. It's also important to understand how the deployment strategy affects different firewall and security setups. Another consideration is where different resources are physically located in the latency that would be introduced by changing regions. As discussed earlier, it's also important to understand how different licensing costs differ between the different deployment strategies, as well as the infrastructure costs of things like load balancers and additional VPCs and dedicated load balancers. Thank you for watching this Friends of Max video on high availability and disaster recovery options with MuleSoft's Cloud Hub. As discussed, if you plan to explore multi-region deployments with your organization, there's a lot of homework that you need to do to ensure that you are fully enabled on this topic. If you're interested in learning more on the topic, I will be creating more videos that go into deeper levels of details on the different considerations. But with that being said, in the meantime, there's further documentation on this topic on our documentation site, docs.mulesoft.com. Another path that I would suggest you follow is having a follow-up conversation with your customer success manager on the topic, and also consider including MuleSoft's professional services or certified partner in these conversations, as they both have extensive experience in delivering these types of solutions. Thanks again for watching this Friends of Max video, and I look forward to discussing this topic in more detail in forthcoming videos.